Okay, this is a bit too hypey for me. Katarina Ferreira is here, and Andrea Ibanescu is here, and Diana and Mashari, and awesome. Welcome, everyone. This is the last show and tell session. They've been great so far. We've been learning a lot. Remember, you have full control over the volume. I also have a bit of drilling in the background, not at the moment, but you cannot miss it once it starts. My neighbors. Anna Maria has no control over that volume. <laughs> exactly, no control over that volume. Yeah. But luckily, I only have to tuck at the beginning for a little while, and then Jonathan, I think you're in a fine place. All right, which of these digital habits work best for you? No phones in the bedroom, limit screen time, set your phone to do not disturb, disable notifications, clean out your apps every now and then, having no social media days or hours or minutes, or something else, share it in the chat. And you can pick how many you want, disable notifications, Okay, keep oh, them I coming. can vote as well. Okay. Does, does it? Uh, you, yes, exactly. You can vote, mm. and then you see the uh, you see everyone's answers. Let me kill the music here. Um, well, Jonathan hosted a, a butter mixer. Was that a year ago? Maybe. Yeah, it probably was about a year ago. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about digital habits. And obviously today we talk about like, it's a meta talk about digital habits because he actually talks about the learning experience that he designs for his cohorts. But the topic is digital habits. Um, keep the poll coming. I am quickly introducing Jonathan here. Um, he's a seasoned web developer and user experience designer. Does that feel already that that's another lifetime ago? Uh, in, in some ways, yeah, that does happen a little bit, but yeah, mainly a, a, a previous life. Yeah. <laughs> For the past 10 years, I spent um, designing and delivering programs that demystify disruptive technologies such as machine learning and AI uh, for corporate leaders around the world. But in 2015, uh, his career took an interesting pivot. Uh, he was on a meditation retreat and he suddenly found himself doom scrolling Twitter despite his best intentions <laughs> to relax and be present. Um, so that prompted him to, to found Mind Over Tech with the mission to help both himself as well as others to find um, a better relationship with their tech while embracing the gifts of the digital world. It's not bad per se. We're just stuck in some habit loops that make it quite hard and they're, they, they can be quite disruptive. Um, and today, Jonathan will talk about a cohort-based learning experience that um, he designed and is currently hosting for folks like us who want to master um, the digital habits. So we're going and putting our learning designer hat on and we're going to spend time deep diving into this concept. And as per usual, we'll have time for questions and conversations at the end of the session. Feel free to pop them in the chat so we can surface them you know, as they, as they come to you. Otherwise, the session is being recorded like all of our uh, events and will be shared with our community and on social media. So let me show everyone the results here. We've got notifications as quite popular, no phones in the bedroom. Do not disturb, clean the apps, limit screen time. No one is limiting their social media consumption. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Well, Jonathan, the mic is over in your court. Take it away. Wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, lovely to, yeah, lovely to meet you. Um, thanks for, for taking your time to join us today. Um, I'll, I'll try and get straight into uh, sharing. Um, yeah, a little bit of the behind the scenes about about how this the, this course has come about. Um, I have a few things that I want to highlight, but probably for you as well. If if you know if you're in this this role of designing something, um, <clears throat> quite often when it comes to think about like the most in interesting things to share, sometimes you almost have a bit of a blind spot. So I'm going to pick out what I think is the most interesting, but I really welcome any any questions and you know around anything that I'm sharing because 
maybe there's something that I've not thought of that that might actually serve you better. Um, so, um, as Anna Maria said, um, yeah, I founded Mind Over Tech in back in 2018. So we run, um, you know, a lot of the work that we've done since 2018 has been uh, corporate training. So basically, um, you know, talks, workshops, um, and longer form learning journeys for uh, a range of different um, clients all around the world. Um, and actually about a year and a half ago, uh, to two years ago, we also started uh, working with uh, individual professionals as well. So we're focused in the professional space. And that started with um, the creation of uh, this card deck that I'll speak about more uh, shortly, which is full of experiments related to some of those digital habits that Anna Maria had up. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because the cohort course um, is something that we launched um, or ran the first one uh, about a year ago, essentially. And we run these on a quarterly basis, so for a year. So um, we're, we're right in the middle of delivering, um, like literally bang in the middle of delivering <clears throat> the fourth uh, one at, at the moment. And every time we run it, there's just a huge amount of kind of learnings and improvements from each one. Um, so it's a six week course. Um, and the purpose of it is to support people on a deep dive journey in understanding and working with their digital habits. And to be really clear up front, we don't think that anyone, that we don't think there are good or bad digital habits. It's more about are they intentional or not? So there's, there's no, we don't say any, any particular digital activity is good or bad, but the criteria that, that, that we say is important is, are you doing it on purpose? And, and, and are you choosing to do it because it aligns with what's important to you and, and serves your goals? Or are you just doing it by mistake? Um, and ultimately, um, how does it impact your productivity, your, your well-being and connection? And I share that because I think it's useful context just to, you know, to understand what, what, what it is that I'm sharing otherwise about the course. So um, I've picked out uh, just like a number of um, kind of insights, I guess, that I've learned through, uh, through kind of putting this together. And designing it because actually I've got um, this 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 course to begin with is actually synthesizing a huge amount of knowledge. Um, I've uh, you know been exploring this space for a long time. Let me just uh, do this one. Oh, that's not that's not going to work, is it? Okay, fine. Um, I was just going to show you my bookshelf, um, but basically uh, I had to condense a huge amount of information um, into something that made sense in a very pithy way for people. And so actually the design process for this course um, took a really long time. And uh, on our course, we actually began with having coaches uh, uh, alongside the course because it's a, a course which involves people going through habit and behavior change over a period of time. And so we actually brought the coaches in and we spent probably two months having one meeting a week um, over a two month period where we would regularly get together and basically map out uh, the, um, the the kind of whole experience of the course. And actually, if I just I just remembered, I've probably got here some very old stuff. I'm not even. Um, hmm. Okay. Um. That's probably too risky to try and find that because uh, yeah, it's going to take me too long. But basically, I had a couple of boards like this where we were literally kind of mapping out each each week. But, and, and I'll zoom in more into these in, in, in a minute and show you some more detail, but really kind of before, like alongside looking at the content, also really digging into, um, uh, as this slide was saying, uh, the edges of the experience um, and, and kind of really designing, um, as much as designing the content, really designing all of those little moments from start to finish, which could really make this a seamless experience of people for, for possible. And that included things like, um, you know, making sure that we had a really clear process for having onboarding calls for people once they'd signed up. So once they signed up before the first session started, actually, you know, booking some time in with them, using Calendly to make that easy, and actually having a call with them crucially in butter. So um, I'll get onto it later, but, you know, one, one of the things that I'm, <clears throat> you know, that one of our design criteria for this course, because it's kind of ironic teaching about digital habits and behavior in a fully virtual environment, that th there could be an irony there. So actually it was really important for us to choose uh, tools 
which align with our purpose in the same way that I was talking about intentional tools. And that's why we run all of our cohorts in Butter, because we really believe that they provide not only like a novel and, and kind of energizing space, but actually um, a lot of the, the tools really help reduce uh, dis distraction and cognitive load. And that, that's a point that I'm going to talk about later. But back to what I was saying before, actually um, doing this onboarding call with people in Butter um, so that all of the potential issues, because Butter is great, but quite often first time people either don't have the app or they've not quite figured out how to show their camera or there might be some issue. So we use that onboarding call not only to get to know them better, but actually already to kind of make them get used to and feel comfortable with using the Butter platform so that come day one, actually that's a much smoother process uh, for them. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, what else to say around, just gonna have a look at this board here for the edges of the experience. I guess, um, you know, so this here is like me just using Miro to kind of uh, create a bit of a session flow. Um, and I'll look more into this in a, in a moment. But I guess the interesting thing is the bits between the sessions. So uh, as well, in terms of this, this point of designing around the experience, um, really not leaving to chance um, all of the, the communications and, and the threads between the sessions. Um, this is something else that I, I'd clarify as um, you know, designing around the edges of the experience. So just making sure that you are crystal clear of yourself, of all of the, 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 the minutiae. Like for example, if you have a follow-up email after a session, which is recapping the session and has homework and other points or whatever, it's quite tempting to, well, it's not even tempting, quite often you'll be working right up to a deadline, especially if it's the first time that, that you're doing one of these courses. And it's something that can quite easily fall by the, the, the wayside. We definitely found that. But actually the value of um, <clears throat> assuming your course is running over a period of time and that you're setting homework and so on, actually really taking time at the beginning to really design that part well, really helps engagement of people long-term. I've got no idea how I'm doing for time, Anna Maria. So if you could give me uh, a rough sense um, of that, that would be you're great. You're min eight minutes in. Okay, fine. We should probably move on to one then. Uh, let's do this here. Um, okay, next one is holding the space. Um, and really for this, um, actually a lot of what uh, I would share about here is basically just say like, read this book. <laughs> so if you, you're probably familiar with it already, uh, but Priya Parker's The Art of Gathering is just like incredible. Um, and it gets you really thinking with quite an intentional framework about how to really hold uh, the space of the session. So this is a bit different from designing around the edges because it's really designing actually the, the, the spine of your session. Um, and actually I've got a little, so as part of my designing board here, this is basically a little rundown of the main points of, uh, of the art of gathering. And you know she kind of digs into actually being crystal clear about the purpose of the gathering um, you know, uh, setting your guest list. This is not so relevant for a cohort course about choosing who maybe you're not in, in inviting. But here, this is this is the board from the uh, like from the very first time we did this cohort. And here you can see we basically picked out that that, that butter uh, aligns for our values about the venue. Like if if you're running a, a session in person, you would probably choose the venue to be one which really uh, suited the atmosphere of the event um, and. You know whether it's choosing the platform or even choosing what features that you're going to use within the platform um i think making like really taking time to think about that is really important we um, don't have a board by the way if you're showing it to us ah thank you here we go yeah no. so yeah thanks so much yeah so yeah this is my kind of overall document i shared before and then this is a little i just basically read through the book and 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 kind of captured this for myself as a basically a checklist now for whenever I create any kind of an online session, um, because it's it's really, really helpful. Like it says, you know, consider your purpose, uh, consider who's coming in the venue. Um, I really love this one as well, like defining pop-up rules. Like, you know, when you go to a party uh, or someone's hosting you, if they, if they aren't really, it'd be easy to think as a host that if you boss people around, then people aren't gonna like it. But actually when people are in your care, they really like it when you're very clear about what should be done next. And there's something very nice about being held by someone that's that's giving you clear instructions. So um, that uh, kind of, uh, and you can get quite playful with that. And again, keeping it on theme in the way that Anna Maria created the questions when we joined today, they were all obviously all related to uh, digital habits already. 
but you can kind of use your your pop-up rules of, as ways to actually uh, not only frame the session but steer the conversation in a specific way as well i think the last thing that i'd say on here because i could say loads is um actually um actually does it make sense yeah let's do this so a big part of of of, of what she talks about is kind of um like how people arrive and how people leave and you know one thing she says is never finish with logistics uh, always put them in a little bit earlier and then have some bit of content that's nothing to do with logistics but is you know helping people shift back into the world but um one thing that we've done in the cohort course <clears throat> is actually so one of the experiment cards in the deck this looks weird because it's because of my background uh but is called put arriving on the agenda and this is this is one of these digital habits where it's like because people are always busy and they're arriving at your session like probably off the back of another video call it's like building five minutes in the agenda to allow people to actually just go to the toilet make a drink and like making that a formal part of the session and actually in our um <clears throat> so here's the agenda for one of the sessions in butter and actually the first thing i have on the agenda is this arriving block so here we have a um basically Thanks like uh oh thank you <laughs> Too many too many screens so yeah here is uh here's the agenda for the session um and this five minute arriving block which is uh a slide a pdf slide which goes up which just basically lets people know that they can you know either clear the deck so kind of uh grab a drink send that last email uh, pop to the toilet or the dropping anchor part is um you know just breathe <laughs> remember last what happened over the last week maybe recall your motivation for being here. And that five minutes for people that are already prepared is just already a really nice bit of space to just kind of arrive. And, and for people that are kind of rushing last minute, it also allows them to decompress and actually be there fully for you. And we, we just, we run a timer with that as well uh, in Butter, not with music, it's just more quiet time. And to begin with people don't like, I think they get like, I think people feel a bit uncomfortable the first time you do it because you arrive and there's just three minutes of silence but actually very quickly they understand and really come to appreciate it um a lot um yeah so that's that i guess related to that it as i said before is also um f what important for us at mind over tech is designing sessions to reduce cognitive load like we're not against technology we're all about using the latest technology when it's correct um, but also um using it in a very intentional way so that um you kind of get the best bits but without creating extra extra cognitive load and and, and kind of um uh, effort for people <clears throat> so uh one uh like that kind of uh, putting arriving on the agenda um is absolutely uh one way of doing that <sighs> excuse me um using the butter platform as as well is, is one way of doing that uh, what was I going to say? There was, um, but generally as well, um, we kind of, um, and I guess this this kind of relates to uh, to the final point I was going to share is that actually less um, less is more uh, in terms of the content uh, and and the layout of the session. So again, just to kind of jump back to my Miro slide here. Um, yeah you know, a huge amount of research kind of uh, gone into each session. And if you're anything like me, you know, you want to, there's this kind of sense of really wanting to give people the best possible experience from from your course and kind of uh, really respecting the fact that they've, uh, you know, spent their hard earned money and given up their time to come and go on this journey with you. And this real sense of like really wanting to kind of just pour absolutely everything into it. Um, but what we've really found every time we've run this course is actually kind of taken stuff out. Um, al already we tried to kind of edit it back for the first one, but every time you run it, you're kind of actually taking more and more out. Um, and I think that's quite natural. There's, there's this kind of certain sense of safety in, in putting more content in there because you think, well, I'm giving people more value. But actually over time to be able to edit and understand what are the really key things um, which are being said here. And then, as I said, in terms of, reducing cognitive load, not just shoving people full of information, but really giving them some very intentional things to talk about, and then just giving a load of space. Um, and we, so for example, you know, in our, in, we have a 
a two hour uh, session. And actually the first 30 minutes after arriving is just for checking in. And the way that we run that, again, even that is spacious. So um, it begins with uh, a timer. So I say up front, you know, actually, we probably had a busy week. Let's just two minutes to reflect. And we use kind of uh, like our branded theme music when we run this timer uh, to also get people into this mode of like when this music plays, we're in more of a reflecting space. Um, and people just kind of remember what happened in the last two uh, in the last week. And then everybody and the cohorts can be up to 10 people. We keep them intentionally really small so that people can have a very personal experience. Um, then everybody gets three minutes to just talk without anyone else interrupting, just to play back how they are and how their last week's been and how, how their digital habits are playing out. And so that that adds up quickly and is actually, you know, a quarter of the session gone with that. But actually so much of the value in the learning, that's, you know, why people love these cohort courses is that you are you're listening to other people's experience and so much of the learning happens from that. So um, yeah, almost every time I, I kind of feel, I could imagine in a few years time, <laughs> The content almost being, you know, just a couple of really light touch points and uh, just really well facilitated conversation. Um, I, I found that to be in, in incredibly helpful. So we also have people working in, uh, we pair people up as accountability partners. And that's another reason why we do the onboarding call is to get to know people better to kind of curate those relationships well. Um, but also in every session, um, people get time one on one with their accountability partner in a breakout room. And we, we we kind of set them topics of conversation for that. So, yes, um, all of that's to say reducing cognitive load and really less is more, giving giving as much space as possible. Uh, I think I think if it's the right time wise, I might kind of wind down my presentation the aspect and just more get into free form conversation because I think I think that might be more valuable for people. In the spirit of less is more. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So we are opening up the floor for questions. The easiest way, since we're a small group, is to queue yourself up and then we'll pass you the mic. Otherwise, feel free to use the chat if you're in a place where you cannot unmute. Um, and I'll surface those questions for you. Ash, the mic is coming to you. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks, Ana Maria. Hi there. Yeah. Ash. Huge fan of your work, Jonathan. Uh, I, I got your, oh, your, thank you. your cards uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Uh, amazing. amazing. Uh, yeah, I got um, thank you. a question uh, regarding the length of of your cohort experience. Um, mm. It's mm. six weeks. Uh, what is the rationale between uh, behind the, the six week uh, period? Yeah, that's a really good question. So uh, there's, there's there's a few there's a few rationales in there, and actually. Technically, it's actually a 10 week experience, um, but there are there's there's one session a week for the first six weeks and then people have a gap of four weeks and then we have a final reunion on week 10. <clears throat> so to explain that first. Um, the reason for that is because 10 weeks is uh, let's just uh, 10 weeks is 70 days. Yeah, I didn't need a calculator for that in retrospect. Um, <laughs> uh which and crucially the the science around uh habit and behavior change is that 66 days is kind of a turning point for actually um uh new habits sticking um so we, we wanted our process from start to finish to be long enough that um <clears throat> there was genuinely an opportunity for what we're teaching to, to really land um so that 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 was part of it the other part with the six weeks is that what we teach on the cohort course is uh, a framework that we've developed over the years when running our, our corporate training. And the framework has four parts to it, um, mobilize, observe, reflect, and experiment. And actually, um, if I just go back to this again, uh, uh, what you'll see here is that, so these are the six sessions. Session one is kind of setting things up and the last one's closing it, but actually the four middle ones are a deep dive into each part of that methodology, mobilize, observe, reflect and experiment. And so um, it's actually been quite intentionally designed as a, uh, at doing the course we're teaching you and everybody is going through one six week long loop of their methodology at the same time. Um, 
yeah so that's that's the reason for the length very clear thank you very much you're welcome what um what are you uh are you running a quote course yourself ash or design uh, i i am actually uh looking yeah looking to to, to start one uh, I'm, I'm italian mm. and i i, I mm. love what you do uh, i also love mm. the, the whole i don't know um second brain uh tiago forte mm -hmm. uh yeah and yeah. i i would love to sort of like merge those two mm. uh words in, mm. in, a, in a cohort mm. experience so mm. and in italy Fantastic. yeah so yeah good stuff good stuff thank you thank you thank you ash any further questions all clear for everyone i have one for you jonathan okay um the whole experience is designed to for behavior change since you're talking about mm -hmm. habits and so mm -hmm. in learning no matter which type of experience we're designing our goal or end goal is actually behavior change as well um and it's easier said than done in most of the cases mm. so mm -hmm. i wonder what were some of the intentional design choices um within the experience that are kind of supporting supporting behavior change are you doing any specific mm -hmm. activities um any specific moments that you're including mm -hmm. that that you believe mm -hmm. are crucial for that yeah. change yeah to happen yeah i mean in short like every second of the of the 10 weeks is is all geared around that <laughs> um but at, at many different levels so um you know part of part of any kind of a, a change starts with uh some kind of a learning and new insight and kind of just yeah taking in this 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 new information but also crucially if you've read books like atomic habits or know much about behavior change like quite often it's about challenging um underlying beliefs uh, maybe uh, limiting beliefs or um, and so on so um i guess not only is the actual content in the session design uh doing this education but then it's the the, the, the whole course is integrated so as soon as you learn about something then you flip straight into an exercise about putting that into practice whether that's in discussion whether it's in some kind of a homework between lessons or whether it's in running one of the experiments uh, so when people sign up everyone gets a deck of the cards and not only do we teach the framework in the course but we actually kind of run through different experiments over time and <clears throat> really all of this comes down to uh practice to building a practice um, this is true outside of digital habit change as well, but within the world of digital habits, you know, it's not something that you can do once and then it's done. Uh, in the same way that you kind of have to keep running to stay fit, um, you, have, you actually need to keep coming back and doing this regularly. And back to this question about the, the, the 10 weeks, um, once people have been doing that regularly over time for that period of time in a really held way, then actually a lot of the groundwork is laid for them to be able to con um to do that that, that that actual habit change so the 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 education coupled with the yeah the, the design of, of the length is is really doing that mm. so do do they um i guess my curiosity is how do you know that the change is happening like are are okay, they yeah. are are, yeah. are they reflecting or are they capturing mm -hmm. some sort of data somewhere? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah. So the the framework that we're teaching is mobilize, observe, reflect, experiment. So there are mindsets and and tools that we teach mm. around each of those four um, kind of processes. And like I said, we do one big loop of that across the whole thing, but we're also doing it in micro levels every single. Uh, kind of session so people are yes absolutely are like 
you know, these, these these skills are kind of crucial for this. I think another thing that we bring, particularly in the more recent cohorts, we really brought in is storytelling. Um, so kind of actually getting uh, finding ways uh, and kind of um, means in the way that we design the course to actually make stories um, like a key character in the process and encourage people to not only tell stories but um, to spot like keep an eye out for stories around certain themes over the time so that we kind of gather them because often it's through the stories that the the moments which sometimes don't seem that remarkable in themselves um, but the real moments of change kind of get captured in those stories and then they also become things which people remember and become the shared experience mm. of, of, of the group so um yeah like uh everyone on the mind over tech team are, are huge fans of storytelling and everything related to that so yeah that that's been a very useful useful tool mm. have you because it was very interesting to hear the uh how you're stripping it down in mm. terms of content mm -hmm. how did you end up doing that like what were some things that you saw or maybe was feedback you got why take that decision to strip down on the on the content as you go why do you think that's valuable? Why is that a good strategy to follow? Uh, so for us, it was, I mean, it, it, that follows on quite naturally from what we were saying before in as far as actually a lot of the, a lot of the value and the learnings is just to hear about how other people are coping with this. Because that's the thing with your digital habits is that everyone has different needs from the technology. Uh, there, there is no one simple answer which works for everybody on this you have to do the legwork yourself to actually work out what you need, what works for you, what doesn't. And that will keep changing over time as well. So even if someone's talking about something that is not a problem for you or you've never even considered before, like the amount of value which comes from that is, 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 is massive because uh, it can help give you insight into others around you. And it can also be a really useful um, reminder if that situation arises for you at some point in the future. So, um, Really, it's about it's been about identifying what are the most important things on our side. I, I see our job as you know inspiring people and, and aligning them around key themes, and then giving them just enough to go off and kind of uh, engage with this, and then actually let them bring back all of their experiential learning. And then our job comes about just share like creating a space for that information to kind of get flooded and shared out amongst people. Mm. I love that. Uh, I'm and I'm asking because I myself, I kind of went the other way in a in a bit with my okay. word based experience. Mm. It started purely mm. as a peer support group, and mm -hmm. and then in the second cohort, I added some workshops with some structured content around that, which I'm hosting now. So I'm very keen to to learn what were the differences and if um, if folks really appreciated some more content being shared so it's interesting to hear that you went the the other way around i guess the the soft spot is somewhere in the middle um just enough content well, think, and enough structure uh, i think yeah. in the same way that i'm saying everyone's digital habits are different everyone's yeah. needs are different yeah. i would say all cohort courses are different and it really depends on what you know what are you trying to achieve with it what, yeah. what kind of a journey are you trying to take people on um and that's what's fun about designing these things. I think there's so many different ways you could do it and there's no one right way to do it either. Mm. So um, definitely giving yourself a tight deadline to just get started and put something out there um, because getting people to know about it and sign up for it is a whole other thing. You could spend ages designing the perfect thing ready to launch your course and then actually um, wait for ages to get your first person to sign mm. up um much better to put some of your energy into that side of things and then keep designing it iteratively as as you as you go um really treating it as a conversation rather than a um and a collaboration with the people going on the journey with you rather than just um thinking that you know all the answers i think yeah yeah I love that. And I have one last question. I see Ashley's typing. Feel free, uh, folks, to um, to ask your questions. We've got about, about nine minutes left. Um, and my question is specifically to this this bit of the marketing or selling, et cetera. Mm. 
what are some like who are, who are the people who's the target audience who are the people that are signing up and why do they mm -hmm. do that like at one at what point in their life are they taking the decision i need now to make mm -hmm. a, a change um in my digital habits yeah have, have you noticed there are you able to pinpoint already yeah definitely um and i come back to the priya parker thing here as well about mm -hmm. choosing who you invite to your party <laughs> because you know whatever you're running whatever space you're running your course in um there will be decisions that to be made there the thing with digital habits is that actually they're relevant to everybody um but it's not particularly helpful to you know market and deliver a course where technically anybody could come because it's very difficult for those people to self for anyone to really get a sense of, oh this is for me um, so actually, you know, over the years, Mind Over Tech's really narrowed our focus to a, a professional space. So working with professionals. And uh, so the people that we see join the cohort course are professionals who have reached the point of working with their digital habits to a certain extent that they know there are benefits there, but they also understand how challenging it is and 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 and, and that they value uh, not only being guided with with information but also accountability and and a, a supportive environment to get that done so um yeah so basically professionals who are at a point where they've identified that their productivity well-being and connection could be greatly improved through a small investment in understanding how to take control of of, of their relationship with tech essentially um yeah and but with all these things, as with anything, whether it's a co-op course or other product, it takes time to understand that. And you're never finished with narrowing down that um, that clarity about ex like exactly who and, and exactly why. So mm. equally, like, you know, speaking to people, especially after you've done the course and re really like, you know, as much as creating the circumstances to get people to share back with you as much as possible, why they why they signed up and, and 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 any other insight that they've had mm. um yeah yeah that's true i remember the first session that we had we had luke uh, from sapienix and he's at its i think 11th or 12th cohort still iterating mm -hmm. still changing both on the content tweaking things so i thought like this really mm -hmm. is a never-ending journey because you're constantly adding more pieces of data to the puzzle and mm -hmm. can take much more informed decision uh, decisions um all right opening the floor to the last question before the checkout if there's anything anyone thank you so much ash for putting that inside the chat any last question all right you're very welcome mashari all right then here we go the checkout for today your one word takeaway after today's conversation put some music on the background what are you taking away Just mm. strip down content, co adding content, intentionality, free up our curve. There we go. Beautiful. Lots of, well, lots of good stuff there. Um, uh, alongside that, uh, if anyone wants it, we also wanted to just offer a, um, oops, uh, like a small little thank you for those who came. So if anyone wants with a little 10% discount code, uh, whether that's for a deck of cards or even joining the next uh, cohort course as well. Uh, so if you want to learn more from the inside, um, feel free to use that yourself or share with others, uh, but it's only valid until the end of the week. So, yeah. awesome. but, but thanks so much, Anna Maria, for, okay. you know, and, and Bata for, for inviting us for this. Um, if it's not clear, we're massive fans of Bata uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, really great to be part of the community. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Jonathan. It was great to have you once again with a slightly different topic and learning journey today. Thank you, Margot, Diana, Mashari, Ash for being here. Um, and I hope to see you all very, very soon in one of our next events. Until then, have a beautiful rest of the week and put your phone away. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye, everyone.